All right, guys. So first things first, what I'm going to be going over today is going to be S&P 500 futures. This is mostly the questions I get asked about. Obviously, futures trading itself, the entire market comprises of a lot of different things you can trade, right? So all the commodities, you know, wheat, soybeans, corn, oil, natural gas, all that stuff is traded via futures. Today, I'm going to be uh, diving right into S&P 500 futures, though. But you can take kind of the framework that goes into trading S&P 500 futures and go straight into the other things if you're looking to trade those. So before you guys even get started futures trading, I do have to throw this disclaimer in. You're going to have to get approved for them on your account and you do need a margin account to be able to trade futures. As I'll dive into in this next section, there is a margin of requirement that kind of works as a down payment to play the game, basically. So you do need a margin account whether that's over $25,000 or whether you're not doing the pattern day trading, whatever that may be, you do need margin enabled on your account. And you're going to have to go into your account settings and apply and get approved the same way you have to go through all the paperwork to get approved for options trading. It's going to be a separate and similar thing. You're going to have to apply and get approved for futures trading in your account as well. So on pretty much all brokerages, you just go into your general uh, account settings and it's going to be listed right under there. You're going to have margin turned on or off, whether you're on a cash account, you do need margin. You have your, you know, apply for options trading, apply for Forex trading, futures trading will be right in there with that. So you're going to have to go ahead and apply to get approved for that before we even get into trading them. The way S&P 500 futures trading works, if you're searching it in your platform, it's going to be slash ES forward slash ES. That's going to be, I guess you would call it the ticker to pull these up, right? The way they work is you have an initial what's called a margin requirement. You can picture this as basically being your down payment to play the game, right? This is like the cost of playing futures. It's kind of like you're holding something in escrow. So it's not like you're purchasing something at 16,000 and then it's just whatever from there, right? Like you're not buying a $16,000 share of a stock. It's pretty much your, your margin requirement. It's your down payment to play the game of futures. And so the way it works from there with full size forward slash ES, that's your full size S&P 500 futures. It's going to be 16,000, give or take a little bit, and your fees per contract. And then the way it works is plus or minus $50 per point. So you can literally think of this as le the way leverage crypto works, anything like that. So per one point that they go up or down, you're going to make or lose $50 per point. And so if you buy, let's say, you know, you buy forward slash ES, you, you go long a contract at $4,100 it goes to $4,200, you just made $5,000. That's exactly how that works. Now, if $16,000 per contract is a little much, they also have minis. So this is gonna be forward slash MES for mini ES. These are gonna work exactly the same at a one-tenth uh, cost basis. So they're gonna be $1,600 per contract to buy or your margin requirement to you know get a contract. And then it's gonna be plus or minus $5 per point. And so I think these are a really great tool, whereas options trading is obviously going to be the most lucrative, right? You're not going to have a 10, a thousand percent, like a 10 bag trade on futures. Realistically, it's impossible. These are a great tool, though, to work in conjunction with options because it's kind of it's a lot simpler, right? You don't have Greeks. You don't have theta decay. You don't have to time your entries as well. If you think the stock market is going to go up you get long. If you think it's going to go down, you get short on futures and you would just sell contracts to get into a negative position, right? That's how going short works. So you can kind of also use these in conjunction, right? So for a while when we were selling, right, when we got under like 3,800, I was short futures, but I used these kind of to hedge my portfolio where if we had little rips up, I would just play calls. And ultimately, regardless of what happened on the day, I was ending green because of the the volatility of options, I would lose some if we had a green day on my futures position, but then I would play calls and make that back because of the volatility so much higher. My returns on the calls would be more than I would lose on the futures. If we had a red day, obviously I had really great days because I was making money on both puts and the short futures. So you can kind of use them that way. One thing I wanted to dive into was you can see these green little dots uh, the dotted lines vertically on the screen here, the way these work, these are your rollover dates. So you technically have to roll over your futures position every quarter is the way they work. Basically, you can't just go long and hold the exact same contract into, you know, five years from now. They technically you can, but each contract has an expiration date and you just roll it over. So 
you can see there's four lines here. There's four quarters. What do you know? It's pretty much the same as your fiscal quarters. You have a spring, summer, a fall, and a winter rollover date. And the way that's going to work, you had seven contracts long for the quarter and you get into that rollover date. You have to sell those seven and then repurchase another seven of the next quarter. And so a lot of your brokerages will just automatically roll yours over for you. You don't really have to sweat that. But that's kind of what leads to when you hear of like quad witching and all that stuff and you get crazy price action, that's because of that. It's the last day of the quarter. So you have monthly options expiring. You have your futures rolling over. So if there's an extreme amount of people that are long on on futures, they have to sell all those and roll over into the next quarter. So you get a lot of crazy price action based on that. This is a great thing, I think, though, in conjunction with the last video we just did with Dwayne going over the system um, on the 30 minute on SPX. You can use that directly into S&P 500 futures here um, with the 10 and the 50 SMA, right? So here's your buy signal. The 10 gets over the 50 SMA. You're trading above both. You can see we rode the 10 SMA for support for just about a 200 point move. So if you went long one contract of, of uh, slash ES, a full size S&P 500 future contract, this was a $10,000 move to the upside. Um, so that's kind of one of the best ways I think you can use these, not having to time your entries so perfect on options and also having to deal with theta decay, right? If it's not a continual up move like this, it's going to be up, down, up, down in terms of your profit. You could see this was just a steady move to the upside. Um, you know, there's no crazy math in this, right? It's plus or minus $50 a point. You could have comfortably just held these for $10,000 to the upside. So I think this is one of the best ways to fundamentally use futures trading, sorry, is to go ahead. I think the system on the 30 minutes, one of the best ways to tell you with a, a strong indication to get long, get short and then use futures trading on the side as well as options trading in your portfolio to go ahead, um, try and maximize those gains to the upside. Obviously, if you had futures working in your favor and then you were also playing calls on really anything, right, especially the high betas, you could have had an incredible last two weeks using this system. So I think that's one of the best ways to do it. I had gone into the other things you can trade with futures. The only difference going to be, you know, obviously, if you're creating, you're trading crude oil, you're trading natural gas, anything like that your margin requirement is going to be different. So it's not going to be $16,000 per contract of everything. And they're going to have different multipliers. So I, like I said, on a full size S&P 500 contract here, it's going to be plus or minus $50 per point. 50x is your multiplier there. You know, something like crude oil is not going to move the same rate that the S&P 500 does, right, in terms of points. And so I think crude oil is like a 1000 X multiplier because it's going to move a couple of dollars a day, right? The, the S&P 500 can move hundreds of points in a day. So you're going to have different multipliers. You're going to have different margin requirements, but it's all going to work pretty much the same fundamentally where you have your margin requirement to get a contract. And then it's just going to be basically a leverage, long leverage short. Um, so this is one of the great things. They also do trade like 24 five, I guess you could call it. There's a gap between 4 PM and 6 PM every day where they close down trading. But besides that, they open at 6 PM on Sunday night and they trade until the bell on Friday for 22 hours a day. So you can literally trade these at 3 a.m. You could trade the Chinese markets because obviously they're gonna supplement right into the American markets, the European markets, all that stuff. You can trade those live time pretty much with futures overnight, which I think is a really cool feature. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today was this futures trading. Um, obviously, if you're using the system, you're gonna have to turn your extended hours off because these things do trade you know, 22.5. You have to turn those off to accurately use the system as it's based on SPX, which does not have extended hours. Besides that, I think this is a really, really great way to go ahead, um, kind of supplement. I know, I know a lot of you guys aren't holding long positions right now as we're in a bear market. So I think this is a great way to do something with that cash you have sitting. Odds are you're not using 100 percent of your portfolio in options trading. But I think this is a great thing to kind of have working for you on the side as well. All right, guys. So last but not least, I wanted to show you an actual trade recap so I could show you how I actually utilize these things to make money. Right. I think the fundamentals are great, but seeing an actual trade taking place could probably be a lot more beneficial. So this was back in the end of May, start of June. This was a trade I actually took. We had that end of April, beginning of May real slide to the downside here. Right. We we bottomed at thirty eight hundred ish before getting a little retracement and then setting the low of the year so far down at 3639 on futures here. With that in mind, if you guys remember, we had this like nine trading day consolidation range here, almost two full weeks of trading that really had no movement. We would open up or down and then pretty much trade sideways intraday. It was really, really frustrating option wise to try and make money here and myself included, right? It was 
almost impossible. I was losing money trading options for a good chunk of the stretch here because we just had no continuity in either direction, couldn't get a break out of the range until finally we did see this 4070 level crack and we got the really strong spill into the low of year so far. So if you know anything about Fibonacci retracements, you know that a macro size move will retrace 50 to 61.8% of the original move before continuing to either the upside or the downside. So this zone right here that I just highlighted, I chart my fibs backwards just so I have these extension levels, but this is the 50 to the 618 61.8% retracement in this little zone here, right? And so real simply using futures, you can go ahead and look at this basically as an accumulation zone. So I knew we had this really strong sell. I thought we were going to have some continuation to the downside, especially seeing us bottle here right at the 50. And so right between the 50 and the 61.8% retracement, I looked at this as my call it a supply zone, right? This was my area to get short. I would have used a daily candle close over the 61.8% retracement as my stop loss. And every time we broke into here, I was just accumulating more and more shorts until finally we did break through. Um, and we got this really strong move to the downside. So I think I had a cost basis right around 4150. Uh, I got some as we were running up to the 50 retracement. I got some the couple of days we cracked through it. And then as it really started, started to look stronger and stronger, we were getting these daily candle rejections off of it multiple times. I started loading some then a little under 4150. So I'm pretty sure that was my you know average cost basis on the short. We fell all the way to 36.39 at the bottom. So I was just about $25,000 profit per futures contract of slash ES, right? And if you were playing minis, that would have been plus $2,500. So that was about a 500 point move in our favor to the downside from 41.50 to 36.40 ish times $50 per point in your favor, right? 25 grand per contract. So that's like 150%, right? On a futures trade, you really can't beat that. Um, that's kind of how I like to look at these because options trading was damn near impossible right in this zone. So in times like this, when movement's slow or you're kind of consolidating or basing, that can really lead to futures trading being a very, very easy and profitable way to go about this because I had my set stop loss over this level. There's no theta decay. There's none of that BS, right? You just get short at the price level you think. This one uh, happened to work out perfectly. And I got short in this zone and we flushed right through down to the downside, right? And you could do the same thing to the upside if you were just using um, a support level, say. Even if you don't get the move immediately in your favor, it's totally fine. As long as you keep accumulating at that support zone, you get long. You know, if you are have strong conviction in that move, ultimately, hopefully it pans in your favor and you don't exactly have to be right on, you know, right now, as you do with options trading, entries, everything, timing is everything. Futures trading, you can afford to kind of let the markets do what they do and just get long at a said price point and let it play out or get short at a said price point and just let it play out however it should choose.